Hello, viewers. Thanks for watching my show. My name is Jason Robinson. I'm very glad I'm able to bring you these interviews with our Miss Americas. I'd like to ask that you please click the subscribe button so that you can be aware of all my shows and also click the notifications bell so that you are aware when I post new content. I'm very excited to have our guest for today. <clears throat> my guest today is Miss America 2001, Angela Perez Baracchio. Angela, thank you for being here. Welcome to my show. Hi, Jason. How are you? Aloha. Aloha. I'm so happy to have you. Um, when I advertised that I was going to interview you, um, there was a tremendous response. Charles O'Quinn said, absolutely adore her. One of the best e ever. And Aww. Miranda Moore said, so excited for this one. So there's a lot of people excited Aww. to Thank hear you. from you. Fantastic. I'm excited to, have, uh, to be on the show. Thanks for having me. Sure. So can we get started with learning about your yeah. background and how you got involved in pageants? Absolutely. Uh, I was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii, as the eighth of 10 children to wow. Filipino immigrants. Okay. Um, like you, they were both teachers. Okay. Um, and I was a scholar athlete and never competed in pageants before. So I was kind of a late bloomer. Okay. Uh, my pageant career started when I was 18. And that's when I met my pageant director when somebody recruited me at a farm fair. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he worked at a modeling agency and this was right after my high school graduation. And he basically was hosting his first ever Miss Hawaii prelim. And mm -hmm. I'm like, Miss Hawaii, is that the one like the There She Is Miss America pageant? Uh, right. <laughs> I, got, I was like so green. Um, but <laughs> in, in any case, I ended up winning his pageant when I was 18 in 1995. And I made okay. top 10 out of 18 contestants that year. Um, okay. Car Carolyn Sapp came back actually as the MC. Um, oh, cool. Because she was our first Miss Hawaii to become Miss America. Right. And I actually competed with Brooke Lee that year, who later became Miss Universe. Um, oh, cool. So I actually competed three times at Miss Hawaii, third mm -hmm. time's a charm, and that's when I won at 24 and became Miss America. Very cool. So um, Benjamin Johnson said on the finals night, did you have an idea that you were the front runner? Did you have any idea that you would be crowned Miss America? Absolutely not. Not even till the last second. And if you show, <laughs> if you ever see my winning moment, you will uh -huh. see just how shocked I was. Because first off, when I got there, I had two goals, you know, to make friends, okay. have fun. Um, you know, of course, everyone wants to be in the top 10, yeah. right? So you can see your up close and personal video. <laughs> but um, I didn't I didn't think anything beyond top 10. And then okay. I won this, the swimsuit competition on right. Tuesday. And I was like, I can go home happy. I'm done. <laughs> 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 anything else is like icing on the cake. Right. And, and I got to tell you, uh, Miss, Miss Louisiana, Miss California were real big front runners that year. So I okay. was like, there is no way I'm right. winning. <laughs> there is no way. <laughs> So I really thought it was either Faith or Rita Inc. that year. <laughs> okay, we have your um, video of your crowning moment, and we're oh, going to play it for the audience. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I want to ask you just what were you thinking and feeling in that moment. So here is the crowning moment of Miss America 2001, Angela per Perez Baracchio. This is the moment. Someone's life is about to change forever. <laughs> the first runner-up and winner of a $40,000 scholarship is Miss Louisiana Faith Jacobs of Miss America 2001 is Miss Hawaii Angela Perez Baracchio. I love your energy. Like, <clears throat> you just seem so happy, friendly, all that stuff. So what were you thinking and feeling in your crowning moment? Jason, I was just happy to be there on stage in the famed Atlantic City. I mean, a lot of Miss Hawaii's get there and they kiss the stage. They're like, I'm here. I'm part right. of a legacy. And I literally cried when I won Miss Hawaii because I just wanted to represent my state um, on the nationally televised pageant. But I got to say, being in the top five was just such an honor. And uh, like I said, I thought it was going to be Rita or Faith Jenkins. I mean, mm -hmm. and then at the last moment, I actually looked at her and I said, how do you feel? Because I'm like, I'm standing next to Miss America. <laughs> I'm 
I'm in the top two. And she said, I, I said, how do you feel? And I don't know if you can see our mouths moving, but I, I felt like that whole moment just stretched out to eternity. Really? And it, was, it was in slow motion. I oh, swear, wow. I've never felt that. But she's, I said to her, how do you feel? And she goes, I'm in shock. I'm in shock. I'm just in shock. And I'm like, why? You're going to win. You yeah. know, in my head, I'm like, what's the big deal? And so <laughs> when they called her name as first runner up and they called me as winner, I was just like floored. Of course, I'm happy, but I really thought it was her till the last yeah. second. So I always say, I hope I win at the last minute when I watch that video. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. So what was your fondest memory during your year as Miss America? You know, I had so many awesome memories, like throwing out the first pitch at the, you know, St. Louis Cardinals game. I was in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Cool. I got to meet a ton of people on, you know, game shows, Hollywood squares. But my favorite, favorite memory was probably going to the Philippines and meeting my grandfather. My, oh, wow. My, for the first time. And I do talk about this in my <sighs> book. Um, it's just an amazing experience to be able to say that I could meet my grandfather. When being in a family of 10, we never got to travel to the Philippines. Okay. So, that was my first and last time I got to meet him because he passed away maybe three years after my year. So oh, okay. Do you want to talk a, a little bit more about your book? Just tell the viewers what, you know, what is in it? What do you, sure. what to expect? Absolutely. So I wrote a faith-based inspirational memoir called Amazing Win, Amazing Loss, Miss America Living Happily Even After. And I wrote this back in 2014 when I only had four kids. I have five kids now. Okay. I've been married for almost 19 years. Wow. And, mm -hmm. and so um, it's a little bit outdated because I only had four and I have five kids now, but at as far as the actual um, tra uh, the, the journey of my amazing win, it starts off with my win at Miss America. Okay. Um, and then no spoiler alert, but basically it talks about a really big loss that I experienced, not just being oh. Miss America during 9-11, mm -hmm. but also um, a loss of my brother. And so it oh talks my about that. Yeah. But, Very you know, sorry to hear that. Yeah, I lost a sibling you. years ago, so I can relate to that. It's horrible. It's horrible. But, you know, that's why I title it. Miss America living happily even after because most people think it's such a fairy tale, but there's tragedy that happens in everyone's lives. And right. how do we how do we come back from tragedy is is really the the, the gist of the the story. Right. Um, so every bishop asked this question. You were the first uh, Asian Miss America, um, Asian American Miss America, Filipino Miss America, Miss America. What challenges did you what challenges did you face as the first Asian American Miss America? Um, were there racial or obstacles or cultural obstacles that you faced during that year? You know, it was interesting because when I won, I was so embraced. I felt like I was very much welcomed everywhere I went. I mean, I, I met Filipino uh, Americans all over the country, and uh, you know, I was at David Letterman um, just hours after I was crowned. When oh, I was nice. Interviewed. I was interviewed by Joan London for Behind Closed Doors um, with Miss America. And mm -hmm. so it was the first time they had followed Miss America for the first 48 hours. And I remember people meeting me outside of David Letterman's show. Mm -hmm. um, they were like, hi, Angela, I'm Thai, I'm, I'm Korean, I'm Japanese. And uh -huh. I'm like, okay, because I'm Filipino. I didn't get it. Right. I'm like, well, <laughs> right. Okay, that's great. Congratulations. And they were yeah. like, no, you don't understand. You're the first ever Asian Miss yeah. America. And we're so proud of you. And we finally have somebody representing us in the mainstream. So that was mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, I did an interview once with the San Francisco Chronicle. We went out to lunch and it was a lovely lunch. And it's funny how you interview with somebody and then they have a different take on what happened. Oh, okay. Um, so I was kind of shocked because usually I had some really nice interviews and great articles, but this one, they talked about the history of like Filipinos coming to America. Okay. And I just remember reading the article after my interview and I'm like, were we at the same lunch? Wow. They, they talked about this term about how, you know, when the Filipinos came to America, they were kind of seen as brown monkeys and look how far now they have a Miss America. And I'm like, okay, okay that was weird. Really yeah. awkward. Yeah. But you know, that was probably the only time that I felt really weird. Mm -hmm. um, unless we want to talk about meeting some CEOs and governors in different states. Um, I, I remember being at some, uh, I think we were at some appearances where somebody would say, oh, you're Filipina, congratulations. You're the first Filipino American to win, first Asian. I'm like, uh -huh. oh yeah, thank you. And then they'll, they'll follow up with like, my housekeeper's Filipino. Oh, and I'm like, goodness. oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, smile, be gracious, say thank you. <laughs> I'm like, go on here too. And I'm like, oh, oh gosh. <laughs> my sister's an architect. <laughs> right, like, right. I mean, you know, that that was probably the um, yeah. the worst of it. But other than that, I was very much welcomed and embraced everywhere I went. Very cool. And I know the Miss America organization is um, really much um, celebrating and embracing diversity, especially nowadays and doing, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's amazing to see, you know, diversity and see everybody represented. For um, sure. Where do you keep your crown? 
where do I keep my crown? It's usually, it used to be in my closet. Okay. So I took it, I took it out and I put it in its case. I actually have it in a nice, beautiful case okay. um, in my room. So I have it, but I don't wear it when I'm cleaning or sleeping as some people like to think I do. <laughs> I put on every day, actually. No. <laughs> right. So we're both educators and something near and dear to both of us is character education. That's your platform. So could you talk about some of the work that you've done um, during your year and even after um, concerning character education? Yeah, absolutely. So the name of my platform was called Character in the Classroom, Teaching Values, Valuing Teachers. And as you know, with a pandemic, this is so important right now. Mm -hmm. um, our teachers are working so hard and people are just now realizing how hard it is, especially parents who are like, right. go back to school. <laughs> you know, I love my teachers. <laughs> but, you know, I was literally in a different city back when I was Miss America. I was in a different city every 18 to 36 hours on a flight to another city. And I got to speak to students from K through 12 in universities and even got to testify on Capitol Hill on behalf of character education funding. Um, right after I won, I was able to go to Washington, D.C. and meet Colin Powell at the Americans Promise headquarters. Cool. And I lobbied with leaders to get the H.R. 1 bill passed to earmark $50 million for character ed initiatives. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, it, wow. was really, it was really cool to talk about character ed, even at the National Governors Association Conference in Providence, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And then um, in 2003, my husband and I were invited to the White House by President Bush for the dinner honoring the Philippine president. So oh. maybe... Three years later, he had asked me to serve on his president's council on service and civic participation with folks like Patricia Heaton, Hillary Duff, and Michael W. Smith. Mm -hmm. So we got to we got to promote um, the Presidential Volunteer Service Awards. And so it was really an honor to be a presidential appointee. Wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> It was fun. So um, there have been many changes, uh, you know, since you won. There's new leadership. Uh, the lifestyle and fitness uh, category has been eliminated. And you were a lifestyle and fitness uh, winner. Do you have any yeah. thoughts about the new leadership, the changes, the lifestyle and fitness category being removed? Well, you know, I was thrilled to be able to win the swimsuit award. That's what they called it that year. Yeah, and get okay. $1, I got the thousand dollar scholarship mm -hmm. um, during the prelim competition. Um Fun fact, I actually had a dream that I won in July. <laughs> I actually got called in October and I was like, oh my gosh, this is surreal. Um, but anyway, I have to say that at first I disagreed having the swimsuit portion as part of the competition when mm -hmm. I was competing, but I was an athlete. So I thought, you know, I'll play the game. I'll follow the rules. I'll wear, I'll wear the uniform. And so yeah. wearing that swimsuit was my uniform. So yeah. I got to be honest, I wasn't the biggest advocate for swimsuit, but okay. I do under I did understand the logic behind being physically fit and being able to handle the rigors of the job in right. this America. Um, so being able to challenge myself and overcome my fears was amazing. So when they took it out, mm -hmm. um, I have to admit, I was disappointed at first because yeah. it was part of the tradition. You know, we started off as a bathing beauty program in mm -hmm. 1921 and I was sad to see them take it out and not replace it with a fitness component. Right. So I do hope that it does come back in some way so that young women get to experience the exhilaration of like making their fitness goals and achieving them with hard work and dedication and a clear focus. Right. Um, I interviewed Chantel Krebs, the interim president and CEO um, of Miss America a little while ago. And mm -hmm. um, she said later in the year, there'll be an announcement, you know, as far as what's going to happen for the 100th anniversary. A lot awesome. of people, you know, have similar thoughts, uh, you know, as you, like they thought, well, we don't see the need for it, but then they missed it and stuff like that. And they do wish that it was a part of it. What sport did you play by chance? Oh, I played volleyball, basketball, and ran cross country. So wow. It was, I'm more of a basketball player, though. That, that was my thing. Very, very cool. <laughs> so um, do you go to the competition every year? Um, do you plan to make it to the 100th anniversary competition? So, I would love to go every year, but I don't go every year because, you know, I was living in Hawaii and I was having my kids. Um, but I did go for the 90th anniversary and I went back in 2014 and I hope to be back for the 100th since it's also my 20th anniversary since winning this. America oh, 20. cool. Oh, Very cool. I'm going to try my best yeah. to make it too. Um, awesome. one of our uh, one of the fans said, could you just talk about your career in education in the career in, your, in the field of education? Sure, absolutely. Um, so my bachelor's is in elementary education and my mm -hmm. master's is in educational administration. And I was able to get my master's with the scholarship money that I earned. I earned over $100,000 competing in Miss America. So I'm a huge advocate of the scholarship portion yeah. of the program. Um, but I have been an educator for over 20 years. I started off as a K-3 to PE teacher mm -hmm. and an athletic director. Oh, um, cool. My students actually convinced me to run. They dared me to run my third try. So that's in the book. Oh. But, um, Anyway, they were the ones who dared me to run, and that's how I won Miss America. And they were like, what? You tried it, and you won? Yeah. <laughs> but I also worked on a TV uh, show called Living Local with the Barakios with my sisters in Hawaii. I have six of them. Wow. Um, I did television work and promoted my book 
as well as I was a professional speaker while I was teaching. And, and now recently I became a vice principal and now I'm a principal for seven years. <laughs> but um, my husband and I started a Polynesian entertainment company. You know, I danced hula for my talent. Yeah. Um, but we're also working on a TV show for children called Nalu's Wave. We have a Nalu's Wave YouTube channel. So I'm excited to combine our talents in music, education and entertainment. Very, very cool. Um, David Douglas asked, um, could you talk about the Over the Rainbow collaboration that the Miss Hawaii's did? Oh, yeah. Awesome. So like in March of last year, when the pandemic just happened, we had shut shut down everything. Penelope Ng Pak, a former Miss America, sent all the Miss Hawaii's an email because we have a really great sorority. Oh, cool. Send us a- said, please send us a video of yourself in your quarantine bubble, no matter where you are in the world, showcase your talents. We're going to share it online and we're going to give hope and try to uplift others during the beginning weeks of this pandemic. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I loved this collaboration that we did seeing all my sisters all over, you know, I hadn't seen them for years. So it brought us together and just being able to appreciate the uniqueness of their beauty and their individual talents was so special to me. And I just hope many people enjoyed it and were as touched as I was to be a part of it. Very cool. Uh, what do you do for fun? I know you're so busy <laughs> with work and family, but what do you do when you have time just to have oh, fun? Man, when I get to go home to Hawaii, I love to you know get my spa treatments done, right? <laughs> right. We talked about getting those massages and hanging out with my family, but definitely just hanging out with my kids. I got five of them, so they keep me real busy. Cool. How old are they? Um, they range from 16 and I got a 14 year old all the way to five, a five year old. Very cool. <laughs> Two in high school, one in preschool, two in elementary. Nice. So you are a motivational speaker. Um, What advice would you give people, uh, young ladies who are competing today in the Miss America system? I would would definitely say don't try to be anyone else and don't try to compete against anyone but yourself because Mm -hmm. you're unique and beautiful in your your own way. And I know it sounds cliche, but I think if you're constantly trying to be the best version of yourself, you just Uh really can't go wrong. You just can't go wrong because you're perfect the way you are. What advice would you give just in general about life and being happy and and successful in life? So, you know, my book says Miss America living happily even after no matter what comes your way, you know, wear that invisible crown on your head because you own it. You know, I I had recently I don't know if you know this, but I had a cancer diagnosis in 2018. So I've been, you know, I. I literally am a survivor of breast cancer and I lost all my hair. Oh, my goodness. I had chemo, I had five five surgeries and I'm I'm still living. So really, you can still find ways to be happy and positive no matter what challenges and obstacles face you or Mm -hmm. that you're facing. Um, And so I just encourage everyone to have a strong faith in yourself, have a strong faith in your family, your friends, and especially God. And again, you can live happily even after. Wow, that's amazing. That is amazing. Um, Did you watch the last Miss America competition? And is there anything different that you would like to see um, at the next one? Yeah, I saw the last competition. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I definitely think that Camille is an amazing Miss America. I, mm-hmm. I'm so happy to welcome her into our sorority. And she's she's gorgeous. She's talented. She's intelligent. Um, and it's all the makings of a, a wonderful Miss America. Um, what I'd like to see is, I think, again, bringing back some kind of a fitness component, because okay. I think it is important to be well-rounded. Right. And so a lot of these girls work really hard, and it pushes them when they know that they're competing for it. It holds mm-hmm. them accountable. So again, I'd love to see something like that. And if that's something that's announced, That'd be pretty exciting for the formers to watch. All right. Um, this just came to my head, but I think you are beautiful, all, like amazingly beautiful. And I think you have good Aww. style. So um, can you talk about some of your your beauty secrets or your tips for being in shape? <laughs> uh, where do you like to shop? Just beauty. Uh, what, what are your tips for that? Oh, sh- sure. Well, I love Whole Foods. That's like my new favorite place to go. <laughs> okay. Whole Foods and Sprouts. <laughs> When it comes to like eating and being healthy, you Mm -hmm. know, I'm I'm so busy every day with my kids. So I think having that shake in the morning and, you know, making sure you get all your proteins, lots of leafy greens and veggies, you know, um, and then I do just a short workout every morning, just making sure that we're working out every day, doing something. Um, as far as like makeup, there's a really, I I have a ton of Mac that I'm trying to get through, but you know, another great thing that that is great for cancer survivors is a a beauty counter. A friend of mine who's also a former Miss Oklahoma, Mm -hmm. um, they they have really great products for people who've been through that because of all the toxic chemicals in some of the things that we're using. Mm -hmm. So um, I I would love to just recommend that. (laughs) Cool. I, uh, when you were competing, did you have a favorite phase of competition or a least favorite phase of competition? Yeah, that's a great question. Interview was my favorite, hands okay. down. Uh-huh. Interview was just, it was fun for me. I was like, oh, I could do this all day. I love to talk and meet people. <laughs> um, but I think the hardest one, and even my director said this, that, you know, your worst, your worst phase is, is swimsuit. And I was like, oh. this is, 
two weeks before the competition. And I was like, oh. okay. So I think, I mean, I think it was really that just trying to push me, push me to be harder. So I, I can look back in retrospect and appreciate that because mm -hmm. if that was my worst phase, then, and I won the competition, right. that was amazing. So, yeah. I mean, I did have to work really hard at it. I like literally went from a size eight to a size two in that year. Are you serious? I was, just, I was killing it. I cut the sugars, <laughs> cut the carbs, did my Tybo, did my like workouts, sit-ups, water. I mean, I did all, all, all. <laughs> inspiration. I think I only have one more question. Um, you are such an inspiration. Just talking to you in this little bit of time. Um, what would you want? What do you want your legacy to be? Um, it, it just appears that you're having such a tremendous effect on the world and I see why you you are Miss America what would you want to be remembered for you know I think about this especially with mortality facing me when I got my cancer diagnosis and mm -hmm. I survived it but really I'm like what is my legacy I think what's really amazing was to be able to say that you know I, I was the first Asian Miss America in the yeah. history of the pageant and you know in the hundred years there's never been another Filipino American woman to win and I think it's mm -hmm. awesome because when I meet young Filipino women they're like oh my gosh like you won like the Super Bowl of all these pageants. <laughs> right. You won Miss America. So it's really, it's very humbling. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the biggest legacy for me is just, am I, a, am I a faithful person? You know, in my, in my own faith, I'm a mm -hmm. Roman Catholic. I'm a Catholic school principal for a K through eight school here okay. in California. And it's like, what is my legacy? Have I brought people closer to God in their faith? Mm -hmm. Have I been a, a good wife? Have I been a good mother to my children? Um, have I been a good friend? Have I been a good daughter? I think wow. that's the legacy I really want to leave behind. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. I could just talk to you forever because I'm just enjoying this conversation. But Same. I won't. I won't take up more of your time. I will say, um, I would love to meet you if we're at, both at the next Miss America competition or something. You Absolutely. know, I want to be I want to be an assistant principal and all that. Yes. I plan to get that. So if you ever want to give me some advice, um, but I do want to thank you so much for uh talking to me, and I'm sure that the viewers will enjoy hearing from you. Um, you can stay on and then I'm gonna close up the show and then we'll, we can talk more afterwards. Okay, great. All right. Well, um, thank you so much, Jason. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I wish we could talk <laughs> even more. Absolutely. But, <laughs> to the viewers, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my show. Um, I do want to ask, um, please support. Um, you can email me at jasontimothyrobinson at gmail.com. Um, you could donate to my cash app. It's dollar sign J-T-R-O-B-I-N. Um, or you can find me on Facebook. You can donate to my um, GoFundMe. But if you enjoy my shows, please consider donating. And my next guest is going to be Miss America 1948 BB Shop. Uh, but once again, viewers, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the show.